Welcome to the scripting Wi-Fi pen testing tools in Python series at Pen Tester Academy. Now in this video, we're going to make a little bit of more progress and create our own SSID finder using Scapy. So how do we do that? Well, very simply, just two steps. Step one, filter based on beacon frames and step two, iterate through all the tagged parameters and find the SSID. So let's jump right in. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually launch Wireshark this time. I already have Mon0 created on monitor mode. So ensure you do that. And let me pick up a beacon frame here. Let's look at it for just a bit. So if you notice, we have tagged parameters and here is the SSID parameter called Khan. And the first thing which probably you might see here is that there are a bunch of tagged parameters, right? And the SSID has a tag number set to zero. This is important because this is type length value. Interesting. There are also other tagged parameters which are there, right? Uh, as an example, you have the channel set uh, in a tag number three, right? You have supported rates, you have a bunch of other things. Now, typically, uh, the SSID would be the first tagged parameter, you know, however, of course, you know, a vendor could rearrange them. Uh, you're supposed to pass through the tag length value uh, rather than assume that the SSID would always be the first. But, you know, most APs have the SSID as the first one. And hence, I've seen a lot of scripts using SCAP and raw sockets, which make the same assumption, right? So here is what I'm going to do. The first version of the script uh, is basically going to go ahead and have the assumption that the SSID parameter is the first act parameter, right? And then after that, in the second version of the script, we will iterate through all the tagged parameters or, you know, IE or information elements as they're called and find the SSID. Okay. So let's jump right in. Now let's call this script SSID finder.py. Let's import whatever is required. And ideally guys, you should be typing in along with me, right? Uh, that just ensures that, you know, uh, you are trying it out as well, right? Please don't take my code and just run it, right? It won't serve a purpose. If that's all you wanted to do, uh, I think Aircrack NG suite of tools is way better than probably what we can write in SCAP, or at least with, you know, so little of SCAP. Uh, import scapy.all. Right, then let's go ahead and define our packet handler. Let's define our sniff here. Number of packets to sniff. And finally, the packet handler. Great. Now, the first step, of course, is we'll have to check if this is a beacon frame or not. That should be simple. If packet dot has layer, right, dot 11 beacon. And if you're wondering where I got that, if you recall when you were playing with Scapy, you did an ls and at the very top in here we actually had a dot 11 beacon layer already defined for us right 
and that's how we can quickly check that then in this case let's use the shortcuts uh, just do a print let's actually define our SSID set as well and let's actually do a quick check first if pkt.info not in SSIDs All right print len SSIDs which basically gives us the number of APs we are seeing now pkt.info uh, if you recall would contain the SSID right this is of course assuming that the first ELD is going to be the SSID uh, then let's print the MAC address pkt.eddr3 should be the BSSID pkt.info have forgotten to do an add so let's do ssids.add so that we add it to our set and the next time we don't end up printing a duplicate pkt.info this let's also ensure that pkt.info exists There you go, we have our SSID sniffer, right? The reason it's starting with zero is we should have done the add before we did the print. This should solve it. And there you go, right? We have our SSID sniffer. You can run error dump ng remember uh, the currently there is no channel hopping which can happen by default we we'll look at how to write your own channel hopper in scapy a bit later but yeah you can go ahead hop channels and and that way the ssid sniffer would go ahead and find new ssids great now this was version one and as i said in this our assumption of course was that the first elt uh, you know pretty much contained the SSID now let's go ahead and go through a more iterative approach let's call this SSID finder v2 pi let me open up v2 now let me remove this part Let's actually very quickly just look at a beacon frame within Scapy, right? So let's do a packets equals sniff i phase equals mon zero count equals ten. Okay, so here is a beacon frame at number 9 as an example. We'll just take that. Yes, 9. Right? So now what we said is in the very first version, we assume that after the dot 11 beacon layer, we have our dot 11 ELT layers begin. And the very first one was assumed to be the SSID, which is typically the case. Now, what if we had to iterate through all of these .11 ELTs 
and find the SSID by using the ID value, right? Uh, the ID value for an SSID is zero, just as what we saw in Wireshark, right? Here it is. So you can pick up a beacon and verify this, that the tag number is actually zero. Okay, so for this, you know, we would go ahead and iterate through all the dot eleven ELDs. So let's do that. Now at this point, what we have to do is basically find dot eleven ELTs, right? So let's actually use a temp variable. Now we do a while temp temp equal to temp dot get layer. Let's actually get the dot eleven ELT, right? And at this point, right? Here is what we can do. If temp and temp dot id equals equals zero, right? This is the first step. And temp dot info, right? If you recall, the info was what was containing the SSID. And temp dot info not in SSIDs, right? This is going to be our SSID list. Let's actually define that as a set here. It's already defined. Great, up here. Now, if this is the case, then we found ourselves a brand new SSID. And what we're going to do, of course, is add it to our set. So SSIDs.add temp.info. And we could even go ahead and print stuff in here. Print len societies uh, we could print the mac address pkt dot ddr3 then finally the actual ssid which is temp dot info right and then at this point we can break because there is no point iterating through any more dot 11 elts right there's only going to be one containing the ssid and here, let's say in the very first iteration, we did not find uh, the SSID tagged parameter, then we need to continue our search. And that's why I'm going to use temp equals temp dot payload so that we can move on to the very next layer and then go back and search if there are any dot 11 ELTs in there. Right? Uh, this looks okay to me. Let's check if this works. SSID finder v2.py mon0. Okay. Perfect. Seems to be working great. Right? Now, what was the best thing about the code snippet I just shared with you? Right? The best thing was that we are iterating through all the ELTs, which means you could actually have iterated and checked for anything else as well, uh, which includes, let's say the DS parameter, the supported rates, and even later on stuff like RSN information, which would tell you that if it's a WPA2 uh, AP or what is it really doing, what is, what are many other capabilities that the access point can have, right? And this is the trick here. All you have to do is keep changing temp.id and depending on the ID, temp.info, what it would contain and how to interpret it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of times KP might not go ahead and interpret and parse uh, the actual info inside an ELT, in which case you would have to do it yourself, right? Fantastic. So hope you guys had fun, but keep in mind, there's one small thing here. In this case, I'm just finding one AP with the SSID. 
if there are multiple APs advertising the same SSID, we might just find one of those APB SSIDs here, right? Uh, one of the things you can try is how you can maintain a list of B SSIDs for a given SSID, right? And maybe print them in a comma separated way, right? I leave that exercise to you. So hopefully this video was fun and if you're enjoying your time at Pentester Academy, then please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.